Learn number seven of my podcast. My name's Emma and this is where I like to chat about knitting and also sometimes some crocheting. I, um, I've got a bit of a chatty episode for you today. I don't have any finished objects because it's only been a week since I last filmed. I am wearing my wool and honey sweater though which I've not talked about properly before so I can chat a bit about that and I do have two new projects as well that I'll be able to show you. So and also, and I talked last week about possibly doing a knit and chat, I did put a question box up on Instagram and asked if anybody had any questions or ideas for topics and things. And I did get a few questions, so I've got those written down there. Some of them are answered actually, or, or will be answered kind of as I go through and show you the projects that I'm making, but I thought I could chat about those a bit as well. So I will get started and I'll talk a little bit about my wool and honey, which I showed you, I think, in my very first episode back in July because I'd just finished it. I didn't want to wear it and show you because it was it was so hot outside. But I'd finished it and I put it away for winter. So let me stand up to show you. It looks better with jeans, but it's, it's, I'm wearing black leggings. It's one of those days today. I can't I can't face wearing jeans today. I need. I fancy sort of slouching about in my, in my comfies and my stretchy pants so obviously with jeans I think it looks better but I'm really happy with this. Oh, one other disclaimer as well, this hasn't been blocked and it probably could do with blocking so back in July when I finished this I I popped it away and I thought well it needs blocking but I'm not going to be wearing it for quite a while so I'll just pop it away and then I'll block it closer to the time when I'm going to be needing to wear it. I forgot all about it. The weather has suddenly come in really cold and autumnal and I wanted to wear it basically. <laughs> I couldn't be bothered to block it and wait for it to dry. So what, I'm, what I'll do is when, it's, um, when I wash it, I'll hand wash it and block it properly then. But yeah, I'm really happy with it, mainly for the reason that I didn't think I'd be able to make this. When you look at it, it looks so seriously complicated. And in fact, when I was making this, my friend Emma, who has the um, Potter and Bloom podcast, she said she was going to make one as well. And I remember thinking, oh, thank God. Thank God, because when I get stuck, I can ask her for help. Like I won't be completely on my own. But actually it was absolutely fine. Andrea Mowry's patterns, Honestly, they're so good. You, you you download them and go to print them off and there's so many pages and you think, oh my God, this is gonna be so super complicated, but it's not what it is. She just goes into so much detail and explains how to do everything. There's like, there's no ambiguities with hair patterns at all. Everything's spelled out. You know, sometimes when you're making something and you read the pattern and you're thinking, oh, well, do they mean this or do they mean that? And it could kind of mean one or two things. With Andrea Maori's patterns, there's none of that. Just everything is spelled out and it's clear. So it was it was actually it was really simple. So all it is is these bits that do the, that make the honeycomb, they're just um double and triple yarn overs and things like that. And then what happens is when you come round um later down in the sweater, you just drop that. And I think the um, the yarn that I used helped a lot as well. So I've made this in Cascade Fingering. Um, I think the shade was Doe Skin Heather. I don't actually have any of it left over to show you. I had one full skin left, but I didn't, I didn't keep it. I don't see the point in just keeping a, a random skin of wool left over from a project. So that went to, it went to charity a while ago after I'd finished this, but it's very woolly wool and it's quite sticky. So when you drop the yarn over, it, it makes it easier. There's no chance of kind of losing the stitch. It's not gonna slip off your needles. Even if you did drop it, it just kind of stayed there. Does that make sense? So it was actually quite an intuitive pattern as well. Once you got into the swing of it, you you know, it wasn't one of those where you kind of, like with lace, with lace knitting, sometimes I get a bit stuck on that. I can never really get into the flow of it. I'm constantly having to look at the pattern, but with this one, once you got into the swing of it, it was really easy. 
is quite a boxy fit. I'm stand back up again. But I really like it and it is quite cropped as well. It's quite a high neck, more than more so than what I would normally go for. The neck does irritate me a little bit, but I, I think that's just me with the style of the neck. I'm not used to having them quite so high up. I'm more of an open neck kind of person, but I really like it. It looks really nice and I know I say this every single time but it is quite possibly one of my favourite things that I've ever made. I would buy this if I saw it in a shop and in fact I'm quite tempted to make another one of these in the future. So this is quite cropped as I say. It sits, if you wear jeans and I've just got a pair of um, mid-rise jeans, they're not, they're not low, they're not like the really high-waisted ones. And if I wear those, it kind of sits just nicely on the waistband. But I think if I made another one, I would possibly make it just a little bit longer. And the sleeves as well, they're only three quarter sleeves. So I could possibly, you know, I'll, I'll make another one of these and just do do the sleeves and the body a little bit longer. So it's, so it's the same, but not identical and obviously in a different color, but yeah, I really like it. Although I had a bit of a disaster with it when I wore it the other day. So obviously these are kind of loose. I don't know if you can see, let me come a little bit closer. You can kind of, you know, you can, you can get your finger under there. They're all kind of just laying on the top. And I leant over to get, um, to get a phone charger out of the socket. And as I went down like this, one of them got caught on the door and it pulled it like massively. I don't think, which I'm really pleased about actually, I don't think you can tell now which one it was, but I had to really kind of mess about with it and tweak and pull and pull all the other ones around it to get it to sit right. I was gutted. It reminded me of my ranunculus. I don't know if I've talked about that actually. Once I made a ranunculus sweater, just a short sleeved one, and the very first time I wore it, was underneath my, my big winter coat and as I zipped it up my coat the zip got stuck in the sweater and pulled a massive hole in it and it just like literally so the first time I wore it I ruined it and I just ended up pulling it all out just have a drink the one thing with this sweater that nobody else mentions I've never heard anybody else mention this but because it's in garter and it's in the round, what that means is you have to alternate a round of knitting and a round of purling, a round of knitting, a round of purling. And where you switch over, you get a line. So let me show you. I can show you on the inside of the sleeve there. Can you see there's a seam there? That's the beginning of the round. And that's where it switches from knitting to purling. And Basically, I've got a ruddy great line going up the back of the sweater and it, it does bother me, but nobody ever talks about it. So at first, I wasn't sure if it was meant to be there or if it's just me. Maybe it is me. Maybe I've just made a mistake with it. But yeah, I've got this seam. I mean, it's not, it's not a hugely noticeable, but it does make me feel a bit... I don't know if other people could see it, but is that just me? Have anyone else made one? Have you got the line down the back as well? I did look on Ravelry at other people's projects and zoom in. Obviously, when people show this and take pictures, nobody shows you the back. And I managed to find some pictures of where people have been making the circular part at the top. And it's one of those really big circular needles. And I could make out the line there. So I don't think it is just me, but yet yeah, nobody talks about that. I'm gonna to have to start um, walking backwards out of the room when I'm wearing it, like I'm meeting royalty, aren't I? To hide, to hide the seam going up my back. But yeah, I just thought I'd mention that because as I say, nobody else seems to talk about it. Um, so that's what I'm wearing this week. Maybe next week I'll be wearing another finished object, which will be hopefully my balloon jacket is so near to being completed and I, I am actually a little bit annoyed with myself today because if I'd just pulled my finger out I could probably have got it done to show you today so literally all I have left to do with my balloon jacket is to sew the sleeves on and that's it I've 
I talked a little bit last week about how it's constructed. So it's a bit different to other cardigans where you make every piece separately. The body's all knit in one piece and then the front panels kind of come round and you seam the shoulders. So I've done that. I'm quite pleased with my seaming actually. I'm not very good at it. Not very experienced. I don't like doing it. But let me hold it up so you can see it. This is the shoulder and you, I mean, you can see the seam. It's just going along here. But, but you're always going to see the seam, aren't you, on, a, on something that's put together like this. But I don't think that's bad at all. From a distance, I don't think, I don't think you can see it that much. And it looks pretty neat. It doesn't look like it's been hacked together or anything. I'll show you the other side. So I, I sewed those together and then I picked up the stitches for the front band and I had a bit of a disaster with it. And the thing that really annoyed me with it is that I, I made a mistake with it and I've made this mistake once already with a different project. So you, you'd think I'd know by now. And if you're a more experienced knitter than I am, when I explain and tell you what I did, you're gonna think I'm a complete idiot. So in the pattern, it just says basically, pick up 225 stitches evenly around the front of the jacket. But it didn't say where to start picking the stitches up from. So I was thinking, well, do I start them on the left hand side or do I start them on the right hand side? And I don't know why, why I decided to do it from the right hand side. I really don't know why, but I got it all. I mean, I was so careful, I spent so much time I got it all laid out, I got my stitch markers and I split off all the front into 25 stitch sections all the way along so that I knew exactly that it was all spaced evenly and how much I was doing. And I started at the right, so I had the wrong side of the cardigan facing me, so the inside of it facing me, and then I went round and picked up all the stitches. And then when it came to going back and actually starting knitting, the ridge that you get from picking up the stitches. So let me show you the, the inside. Can you see that? This ridge, because I'd picked it up from the wrong side, that was on the outside of the cardigan. And I tried and I tried. I thought, well, can I somehow slip all of these picked up stitches and, and do it so I'm working the other way? And I couldn't figure out how to do it. And so I, I just had to pull the full lot out and start again and pick up all of those stitches again from the other side of the cardigan. And I was so annoyed with myself that I, I just, I couldn't be bothered to count them all and to measure them out, the sections again, like I had to start. So I just, I just winged it, but it's turned out okay. The only thing I'm not happy with, and I, I am nitpicking a little bit. Well, maybe I'm not, you might, you might think it's not nitpicking. But at the bottom, can you see, it doesn't quite meet the bottom. That one's not so bad. This side's worse and it does annoy me. Can you see? So when I hold the cardigan up, can you see how it comes up like that? Maybe when it's blocked, it won't look so bad, but it annoys me but it doesn't annoy me enough to rip it out and do it again. I think it'll be fine. I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna try it on and you can all have a laugh at me in my waistcoat because it's not got any sleeves on. Let me show you. The chop saw's made a reappearance behind the bench so I can't, <laughs> I can't move the bench out. I think it looks okay, but yeah, you can see what I mean there. But I think once it's blocked, I don't think it'll be too bad. It's shorter than I thought it would be. It was kind of bottom of my bums there and I thought it would be a bit longer. But, let me just come back out there. It does say in the pattern that it grows once it's finished and as you start wearing it, the weight of it pulls it down and it does lengthen. So that's okay. So it's a little bit short now, but hopefully once it's finished and once I've worn it a few times, it'll kind of settle 
kind of settle into shape but I've literally just got to do the sleeves but the thing that's putting me off is it's because they're sewn on but it's the way that they're sewn on as well so I've made sweaters and things in the past where it's had sleeves attached and normally what you do is you lay the full sweater out flat and then you lay the sleeves out flat as well and then you, you kind of line it up with the, the middle of the shoulder and then you, you seam across and then you hold the full thing up. If you've never done this before, this will make zero sense, but if you have, then you'll know what I'm talking about, hopefully. And then you hold the full thing up and you seam right up the sleeves, right down the body of the sweater and you do it in one piece like that. And I've, I've done that and I know how to do that, but this isn't how you do the balloon sweater. What you have to do with the balloon sweater is seam the sleeves so I've got two tubes basically and then sew the tube onto the armhole and it's that that's making me hesitate a little bit is you know it just seems more complicated I've never I've never sewn a tube onto anything before so I really should get it done but I'm I'm waiting for kind of the opportune moment where I'm and where I'm in the right headspace to to get that done but definitely when I podcast again probably next week that should be finished and I'll be able to wear it but the other reason I want to um the other reason I want to get it finished is because I've been checking the forecast this is how sad I am I check the weather to kind of ascertain when I'm going to be able to wear knits and it's been really cold this week but next week it's going to warm up it's going to be cool but warmer and it's going to be the perfect kind of weather to wear my cardigan on the school run so I really want to get that finished and I, I'm sorry as well if I confuse people because it is it is the balloon jacket the pattern by petite knit but I call it a card and cardigan sorry it, it is a cardigan just have a drink I'm having a cup of tea this morning I'm really disappointed because I went to Asda yesterday so I'm come trying to hide how scummy my cup looks and tea stain. Um, I went to Asda yesterday specifically to buy some of this biscuit tea that people keep going on about. I saw it in, um, in Emma's podcast and she mentioned it. Yeah, and I went specifically to get some and they had every kind of tea you can imagine, but they did not have the biscuit tea. So I've not been able to try it yet. But I've looked on Tesco, I do my shopping online and they do have it, so I'm gonna order some and get it delivered on Monday, so I'll be able to try it then. All this um, all this hassle about it, I don't even like it. So what else have I been working on? I've been working a lot on my Winter's Frost socks. I won't show you them because honestly, there's not a great deal to show you on to talk about that I haven't mentioned in last week's episode, but I've got five pattern repeats to do and then I'm on the tour, so there's Oh, how many rows it's a four row pattern repeat so that's not that's not many repeats you know I've not got much knitting to do at all I'm going to aim to get those done today and finished because I've got a new pair of socks that I'm waiting to be cast on I've got a new pattern and I'm going to use my um leftover yarn from my boho blush and I'm going to make a pair of socks so I've only got two pairs of sock needles, remember, so I've got my um, Winter's Frost socks on one of them and then I've got another pair on the other. So I need to need to get one of them finished so I can cast on my next ones. And the other project that I've been working on is my Anchors sweater. I had a good go on that yesterday. The body needs 10 more centimetres doing on it and then I'm ready to do the ribbing and then do the sleeves. So. I don't think it will, um, I don't think it'll take me that long to finish. I'm already kind of geared up, ready to start another project, but I can't decide which one to start. Now that there's no more knitting left on my balloon jacket, I kind of feel like that's, you know, in my head that's completed now, which is probably why, another reason why I haven't sewn the sleeves on, because in my head it's done. And I was going to cast on the everyday sweater next because that's four ply so I thought I'd get that done and out of the way with but my friend Michelle who I'm knitting it with as a buddy knit she's um she's not ready yet she needs to catch up on some projects so I think I'm going to do another one in between and I can't decide whether to do my Stockholm sweater or whether to have a go at doing one of those um 
one of those colour work ones. I can't remember the name, but I talked about it in that in my autumn and winter knitting plans video, and it's the one by Andrea Mowry, and it's got the hearts going across. I thought what I might do is do Isla's because um, she'll be she's the smallest, so it won't take that long, and then I could come back and do a bit of a bigger knit. So those of you who are new or who haven't seen my winter and um, my autumn knitting plans podcast, that was um, that was a bit of a mouthful. Yeah, I'm I'm planning to make this sweater by Andrea Maui, and I'm making a matching one for me and my two daughters, but we're all having different colours. So I thought I might have a go with one of those because I've never done. Well, I've never really successfully done colour work before so if I do the smallest one and have a go and get it out of the way if it goes wrong it, it's not going to take me too long to redo it that's my thinking behind it let's have another drink okay so one of the questions that I got on Instagram was how many whips do I have at the moment how many projects do I have on the go I think so so I wrote them all down those are my current projects those three are the ones that you've seen before so i've got my winter's frost socks my blue and jacket and my anchor sweater they're kind of my three active ones that i've talked about previously but then i have two new projects and it's quite good really because i got a few questions about crocheting someone asked me if i crocheted at all um they said they really loved it do i crochet and then somebody else asked me will i ever Will I ever get back to crocheting, do I think, and go back to it? And the answer is, yes, I do crochet. And yes, I have actually started a new project and I've got it here and it doesn't it doesn't look too impressive, to be honest. It's not like you, some of your crochet with all the colours looks really impressive and this doesn't. It is just one plain stitch, which is herringbone, herringbone stitch all the way along and it's all it's going to be all one colour do you remember so cast your minds back to my first episode and I think I chatted in there about how I went to a shop and they had some lovely throws but I didn't buy one because I thought well I could make one of those easy peasy and I bought two throw quantities of Starcraft Special DK do you remember? And then I just never made them or did anything with them and they've just been sitting there. Well, I've, it's getting cold, so I've, I've cast, I've not cast one on. I don't, what do you say when it's crocheting? I've started one with crochet and I've used exactly 50 grams of a ball, so it'll be double that. So I've got eight balls. I'm using double knit and yet again, this is one of those reasons, you know, one of these, um, I've used double knit and yet again this is one of those occasions where I'm looking back and I'm thinking why did I get why did I get DK wear? Why Emma? Why? If I'd have got Aaron, it would have been so much easier. I don't want to fall off the bench. But yeah, it's pretty wide. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough wool. It might just end up being a square and not a rectangle, but Yes, yeah, so there's that. I'm just doing the same stitch all the way through. So it's DK Wick Stylecraft Special DK and the colour is warm grey. I wanted a neutral and I'm using 4.5mm hook. I'm not using a pattern because it's just the same stitch all the way through. It's herringbone, not the half herringbone, it's the full herringbone one. And I've made quite good progress actually. I know it doesn't look like it, but I have made quite good progress because it's a really easy one to do without having to, to think about it. So I've got eight balls of the warm grey and then also I got eight balls of the um, of the parchment colour, which is really nice, but it feels a lot thinner than the warm grey for some reason. But for that one, I think I'm going to make a chevron blanket. Quite a long time ago, I made, I made one. Um, and it was huge it was with Aaron weight down so obviously it won't be quite the same but the chevrons are massive I'll I'll put a picture in so that you can see it um so once I finish that I'll probably make a start 
on the chevron one i don't want too many projects on the go at, at once so yeah so i've got five works in progress at the moment if you count my northeasterly then it's technically it's six but because i don't because i hardly work on it i don't really count it as an active work in progress if that makes sense I, that's not bad for me at all five projects and I'm, I'm working on them all all the time and I'm getting through them I think I'm good now at being I'm pretty ruthless so if I'm not enjoying working on a project or you know I don't I don't think I'm gonna finish it I, I don't like to see them languishing I'll just frog them and get them off the list so yeah, I don't think that's bad at all. Any ones that I haven't mentioned there that I've shown in previous podcasts, of, they've gone. Um, yeah, I have something else I wanted to ask you about, actually. I've just looked down at my notes and reminded myself, I'll show you my other new project and then I'll ask your opinion on that. So I have started... Oh, that's not in that bag. I don't know why I picked that bag up. I've started another pair of socks last week i mentioned that it was the autumn equinox i think on friday and i wanted to cast on a pair of autumn socks to celebrate so i'm using my beehive yarn sock set oh, the tangle. and i've started a pair of bonfire socks which is a lovely pattern by emma from potter and bloom and this is what I've done so far. Don't they look nice? I love this yarn. So it was a sock set from Beehive Yarns. I can't remember the name, whether the whether the set had an actual name for the yarns together, but this one was called Foxtails, which is this lovely colour which I'm using just for the heels. Um the cuff, sorry, the heels and the toes. And then I'm pretty sure this one. I'm pretty sure it's called oatmeal, but I might be wrong. I'll have to have a look and I'll pop it down in the in the description below. But yes, yeah, so I've done the I've done the leg, and I've done a shadow wrap heel for a change. I've not done one of those in a while, and I've just just started the foot. In the pattern, in the pattern for the bonfire socks, you support you're supposed to do sixteen repeats in total for the leg but because i've only got a 50 gram ball of the main color i'm a bit panicky about whether i'm going to get a full pair of socks out of it because i've never i've never made a pair of socks with only a 50 gram sock set before i've only ever had the 100 gram ones and even though i know that it's probably going to be fine and i'm going to have loads left over well not loads left over even though i probably know that it's going to be fine and i won't run out let's say I'm, I'm, I'm erring on the side of caution and I'm making them a little bit shorter but I think that's quite a nice nice length actually just the 10 repeats there so they're looking really good I'm really liking them it's such a nice pattern as well it's really easy peasy let me just pop those back away so the thing I wanted to ask your opinion on when I finished my cumulus top I, um, I mentioned about how much I liked the neckline on that. It was an eye cord bind off and it was really simple, but it looked really nice. And I mentioned that I'd made a sweater a long time ago and I didn't like the neckline on it. Well, I found the sweater and I unpicked the neckline. So it looks like this. So you can see on the, well, I've sewn in my ends. So this is the Molly's sweater and it's a pattern by Kadri. I'll pop a picture on so that you can see what it should look like. Um, the necklines, quite, it's a quite a relaxed fit and the neckline's quite open. And I don't know why, yet another one of these circumstances, I don't know why, but I decided to do the neckline, not how it said in the pattern, but I decided to do it in a one by one twisted rib. And also, I don't know why I did this, but I did it really tightly. And instead of being a lovely relaxed fit like this, it ended up kind of kind of like this. I really didn't like it. It didn't it didn't suit the style of the sweater at all. And I did I just didn't like it. So I've taken that out. You can see it's looking lovely now. 
much more open. But I can't decide, I can't decide what to do. If I do an eye called edge, which is what I want to do really, would that then look stupid if I've got a one by one rib everywhere else? Would it look odd? What do you, what do you think? I can't decide whether I should undo all of the ribbing, but then I don't have that much of the yarn left over. I've only got half a ball. And honestly, unpicking the ribbing around the neckline was a nightmare. You know, when you sew your ends in and things, and then you think, oh, I hope it's gonna be secure and it's not gonna come undone. Try unpicking it, and then you'll realize just how secure it is. <laughs> it was awful. I just basically hacked at it with a pair of scissors in the end and yanked it all apart. So I can't decide whether I should do the eye cord edge. That's what I want to do, but I, don't, I can't decide whether it will look stupid or whether I should just try again and do the twisted rib to, to match the rest, but try and do it looser somehow. And I can't do it yet anyway, because the needles that I need are being used for my anchor sweater. I might as well get my anchor sweater out to show you, haven't I? May as well. May as well as wish I had. That's looking nice size now. Did I show it last week? I think I did. Yeah, so I'm, I'm using four millimeter needles for this and that's what I need for the neckline. So I can't do anything yet, which is probably the, for the best because it means I'm gonna have to wait and actually think about the decision and not just dive in there and do something rash. But let me know what you think, please. I'd really appreciate it. Would it look stupid if I did the eye cord edge basically? but didn't do the eye cord everywhere else. It's also a lot shorter than it should be, my Molly sweater. I um, The yarn that I used was actually frogged from another another project and it was from a colour work sweater. I don't know what possessed me. The one that I mentioned before where it was all ended up really puckered. So I couldn't do the sweater to the proper full length, what it should be. So it's, it's more cropped and then the neckline all went wrong. And, but I've used Drops Nord and it is such lovely yarn. It feels so nice. So I definitely want to get it sorted so that I can wear it. So that's all of my projects I've talked about. Um, like I say, I don't, I, next week should be better. I should have a lot more finished things to show you. I'll tell you what I am missing. I'm really missing having a shawl to work on. I didn't think I would so much, but I, I really do. So I've been looking at patterns. Um, I really like doing brioche. Andrea Mowry's got quite a lot of nice patterns with brioche and there's one that's called Brioche Delicious. That looks nice and I keep, I keep kind of looking at them and thinking, well, should I, should I start another one? So possibly, possibly in the future I might, I might make that. Um, yeah, there's some plans for future projects really. I'm already thinking ahead to um, to next year and spring and what I need to make. I think I'm going to make a cumulus again, but the um, the sweater version because it looks it looks quite lightweight. Um, so some of the other questions that I got then. So I've answered the ones about crocheting. So do you think, yeah, a little bit more about do you think you'll ever do crocheting again? So obviously I've started that throw, so I am, but I don't think I could, I could ever see myself getting back into it like I used to. I'm just too into the knitting at the minute and there's, there's so many things with knitting that I haven't done, like techniques and things. So I'm, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying learning all those and doing lots of new projects. So. I probably will always crochet, but just just um, not to the extent that I used to. Um, someone asked me, when do I do most of my knitting? So I do most of it during the day at the minute. So I'm self-employed, but I'm between projects. So I'm, I'm basically, I don't, I'm a, basically a lady of leisure at the minute. I've got something lined up, but that's not due to start until 
um, next month at some point. So I mean, I've got lots of time at the minute to do knitting. So I tend to do it mostly when my girls are at school. Um, every morning I get up really ridiculously early. I get up at like half past five so that I can have an hour of just peace and quiet, knitting time on my own. And then I'm busy sorting everyone, getting everyone to school. And when I get back, I get on with chores and the things, but I tend to knock off around dinner time. And then I have, I have a couple of hours in an afternoon where I'll sit and work on projects. And that's, that's when I tend to get the bulk of it done. I do, I do always tend to, you know, if you're watching TV or if I'm sit, sat playing playing a board game or something, I do always tend to have something easy to work on. I do a little bit then, but I don't make as much progress on the night. So that's when I tend to do all of my knitting. Someone also asked me if I had any tips for new knitters. So I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm like a massively experienced knitter myself. I've been knitting a long time. I've been able to knit for a long time, but it's only recently that I've sort of really picked it up and got into it and started making things and completing things. So one of the things I will say is don't start off with a scarf. So I think everyone recommends starting off with a scarf because it's so simple and you can just do garter back and forth, but it ends up being so boring and just abandoned part way through. So what I would do is just to get your basic stitches down part, like you learn how to knit and learn how to pearl, maybe just do a few swatches and then start something that you really feel motivated um, to complete. So even something that you're gonna wear. There's some really simple shawl patterns out there. And you mean, I was put off by wearing shawls for ages because I thought you had to wear them as shawls. I, but then um, when I realised that basically a shawl is just a scarf, you can just style it the other way and wear it around, I got, I got into them a lot more. So there's some really simple patterns that will just use knit stitches or pearl stitches and they'll just throw in there some other basic things like your increases and your decreases and that adds something. And then every time you do a new project, just try and learn a new technique with it. So a different type of increasing or, you know, once you've got your knit, your pearl and your increases and your decreases, you could try a really simple sweater or something. And then, you know, you just keep building on it and do more things. So like I say, I'm quite into doing brioche at the moment. I really enjoy doing that. But um, I started off just with like a brioche hat and then a brioche shawl and you just kind of grow. And then, then the next thing I'm looking at is, um, is a more complicated brioche where it's not just the plain stripes where it does the patterns and things so yeah just keep building on it and do something that really motivates you something small learn to do socks socks are good because they're only small and you can learn all kinds of new techniques and even if it's really tricky and really difficult to do and even if you don't really enjoy doing that technique like say colour work or lace work or something at least it's only for that sock and it's not gonna, you know, you've, you've not invested in like making a full sweater. So yeah, have a look at knitting socks. When I first learned to knit socks, like I literally, I thought I could do anything. And honestly, there's so many YouTube tutorials and things now that even if you do get stuck or something looks really tricky, you can easily suss out how to do it. Just watch some videos and you'll, you'll be fine. So enjoy. Um. Another question I had was, what's your dream yarn if you had an unlimited budget? And I don't know really, but I think I'd probably say Knitting for Olive. And I've only used their silk yarn and that was a bit of a splurge for me. But so many patterns that I like and so many um, kind of knitters that I, I follow and podcasters use their, use their yarn and they all look lovely. And I love their colour palette, so I'd probably say anything for Olive. I'd just use all of their yarn. So if suddenly, like every episode, I'm, I'm suddenly surrounded by all the knitting for Olive yarn and that's all I'm using, you know, I've made it basically, or I've won the lottery. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed watching. Thanks ever so much. Um, please leave a comment. I always enjoy chatting and seeing what people have to say. I'll be back next week, hopefully, 
I mean, what should I have finished? I should have finished, these are my aims. I should have finished my first winter's, I should have finished my winter's frost socks. So that's one. My balloon jacket should be finished. I should have two completely finished objects to show you. And my anchor sweater, I should be on the sleeves. There are my aims. And then also because I'll have finished my socks, I'll have my new socks to show you next week. So I should have quite a bit to chat about next week and a bit to show you. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening because I'll be putting this on YouTube at my usual time of about eight o'clock. Um, have a lovely week and I will speak to you again soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.